please. Just reminding you. Okay, so we'll call the meeting to order. Everyone should have the minutes of the October meeting in their packets. Um, hopefully everyone has had a chance to review them and I'd like to ask for a motion for their approval. Uh, motion by Trustee Peck, we have a second. Trustee Jesuit, any discussion or corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries, thank you. I have nothing to report as the chair tonight, so we will move on to the president's report. Okay. Okay, thank you. It is it is a special evening this evening, and if you look at the back of the room, and they're soon going to be in front of the room. We have a nice nice crowd here uh, to recognize uh, two of our outstanding uh, groups of athletes. Uh, our athletic director, Kevin Jones, unfortunately couldn't be here this evening. He's currently playing Mohawk Valley across the parking lot. So after the meeting, we're done in time and you want to go see the, the men, you should be able to see the men's team, the women are playing right now. But um, I want to start with our soccer team. And uh, so come on up, guys and coach. Our soccer team this year had a great season. They had a 10 and 4 regional record, which ranked them in the top five at season end. They lost a heartbreaking game in the semifinals with 1 1 0, with 1.8 seconds to go uh, to Mohawk Valley. So it was a heartbreaking loss, uh, but you know we're very proud of the progress the team made this year. And the region is now uh, from on notice that FMCC soccer is a contender. So we have a number of, of individual award winners here tonight. In, in addition to the outstanding effort the team put in this year, we have some, uh, some athletes who received honors both at the region and conference level. So, um, and I apologize in advance, Kevin tried to coach me on, on some, how to pronounce some of your names, but I'm gonna get as close as I possibly can. So we'll start with uh, Marvin Kocheku, all right, excellent. Come on up, Marvin. Marvin earned uh, Region 3 First Team honors and also Mountain Valley Conference First Team. So congratulations. I want to bring up Roberto Salinas. Congratulations. Roberto earned Mountain Valley Conference First Team. Next, we have uh, Daryl uh, Cabasel. They get, they get close. Yeah. And Daryl earned uh, Region 3 second team honors. So, congratulations. Curtis Arnold. Curtis is not here this evening with us, but Curtis earned uh, Region 3 second team and Mountain Valley Conference first team honors. Lewis. Lewis Potter Scarborough. Lewis made the uh, Region 3 third team, so congratulations. And we also have uh, Caitlin Van Heusen, who was also honored with Region 3 third team and Mountain Valley Conference first team. So And finally, but certainly uh, perhaps most importantly, uh, I have the privilege this evening to introduce to you and recognize the Mountain Valley Conference Coach of the Year for the second year running and the NJCA Region 3 Coach of the Year, David Clayton. Okay. 
So very quickly, I just want to read this resolution for David. So, whereas David Clayton has demonstrated success as head coach of the men's soccer team, having led the team to a 10 and four record and a top five ranking in the region, Coach Clayton was, was voted region three coach of the year by his peers. And I just want to add at this point that this is the first time that, that between Kevin and I, we can remember that we've had a region three soccer coach since the late seventies. So it's, it's kind of a big deal. As David Clayton further re received further recognition by being, being named for the second consecutive year as the Mountain Valley Conference Coach of the Year, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Fulton Montgomery Community College that it hereby commends David Clayton for his success as head coach of the Fulton Montgomery Community College for the soccer team the 17th day of November in the year 2022. I'm not really much of a talker unless we're out on the field, but uh, that's not true, by the way. <laughs> it's true. Um, no, I, we really had a group, great group, both men's and women's. Um, you know, we had a good group of kids return, and then some, you know, strong kids came in and helped out the team as well. Uh, we had a little bit of a rocky start and a couple of games where we played four in five days, which tends to be hard when you're playing 90 minutes. So. Uh, a few of those losses would have been probably not losses had those been spread out. Um, but, you know, the, the team did exactly what I wanted them to do. Um, came 1.8 seconds short, which is, like you said, heartbreaking. Um, but everybody knew that we were a top team in the region. Um, all year long, we were ranked number three by the coaches poll uh, behind Genesee and Herkimer, who fought each other for a spot in the national championship. So, when you're playing against teams like we play against that are made up of Division One and Division Two players, you know these guys did an excellent job. Same for the, uh, Caitlin, especially kept us in games without her. <laughs> it would have uh, probably been pretty ugly. So um, just thank you very much for noticing that, and uh, you know all the credit goes to the kids because they're the ones that put in all the work. So thank you. This point, I'd like to welcome uh, Coach Euler and the Lady Raiders. Thank you. So I'd like to start off just by introducing our, our team. Uh, some some of the ladies weren't able to be here this evening, but um, but as you can see, quite a few of them did, did make it. So uh, first, of course, we have head coach Tina Euler. Coach uh, Mike Cabello could not be here this evening, but uh, we have Madeline Avery, who's one of our captains. Amy Bowers, also one of our captains. Amy Hoffman, our other captain. Ariana Muehlberger, Stanley Thompson, Deandre Myers, Crystal McSpirit, Elena Diasani. Did I say that right? Bye, Zeno. Bye, Zeno. Bye, Zeno. Bye, Zeno. Bye, Thank you. Thank you. That's why she's one of the captains. <laughs> Mercedes Lugo. Nelson. And Ariana King. So, I just want to talk a little bit about the team achievements this year. They had an overall record of 26 and 6. They were the 2022 NJCAA Region 3 champions. Also the District A champions. And this group of ladies got to participate in the national tournament this year and they finished eighth place, so we're very proud of them. This time of our program has advanced to the national tournament, so that, that was a huge accomplishment. They had an undefeated Mountain Valley Conference champion. Ship. Uh, they were the tournament champions, obviously. 
they were last year, they were the tournament or they were the region three runners up. They were also the conference champions last year. And their two year overall record is 41 and eight. That's, that's pretty much my So like the men's program, we have some individual honors to, to talk about as well. And we'll start with, with uh, Captain Avery. So Madeline, will you come on up? Madeline was the 2022 NJCAA Region 3 Player of the Year. Mountain Valley Conference Player of the Year. And, and that would lead you to conclude that she was also uh, first all region. She was also on the national tournament all tournament team. So congratulations. Sadie? Sadie was uh, a tournament most valuable player for the region. She was 13. Ariana was region three, all region 13. Conference first team. Region three, all tournament team. Crystal was region region three all tournament team. And Young. Coach. Come on up. So for the second consecutive year, you are Mountain Valley Conference Coach of the Year. We do have a couple of resolutions that I'd like to present to you. The first one we'll do is, is for the team. So, so then I should grab the one for the team, right? <laughs> so the FMCC Lady Raiders volleyball team have demonstrated success. Not up here, ladies. Yeah. This, is, this is wrong. The success with a 41 and 8 record over the past two years, which includes Mountain Valley Conference Chips Ship Conference Championships. It's tough for me to say. Both years and NJCAA District A and Region 3 Championships in 2022 with an undefeated 2022 conference season and an eighth place finish at the 2002 NJCAA National Tournament. Whereas the FMCC Lady Raiders received further recognition with multiple players receiving Mountain Valley Conference and NJCAA regional honors, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Fulton Montgomery Community College that it hereby commends the Lady Raiders volleyball team for their success in the Mountain Valley Conference, the NJCAA Region 3, and the nation the 17th day of November in the year 2022. Now, Coach, this is a resolution honoring Coach Oiler. Whereas Tina Euler has demonstrated success as head coach of the Lady Raiders volleyball team, having led the team to a 41 and 8 record over the past two years, which includes Mountain Valley Conference Championships both years, and NJCAA District A and Region 3 Championships in 2022 with an undefeated 2022 conference season and an eighth place finish at the 2022 NJCAA National Tournament. Whereas Tina has further been recognized by being named for the second consecutive year as the Mountain Valley Conference Coach of the Year, be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Fulton Montgomery Community College that it hereby commends Tina Euler for her success as head coach of the Fulton Montgomery Community College Lady Raiders volleyball team, the 17th day of November in the year 2022.
Thank you guys very much. So I think it goes without saying, first and foremost, I really wish that we could have had the full team here tonight to be able to recognize and honor everybody. It doesn't feel the same without everyone. Um, secondly, um, I really just need to say what an immense honor and pleasure it has been to coach this group of young ladies. Most, actually everybody here who has been with us for two years, um, we're graduating um, my sophomores this season. So it's a huge recruitment year for us this year. Um, hoping to come right, you know, right back strong next year and be able to do the same thing. Um, I believe it's every player's dream, but it's definitely every coach's dream to win a regional title and to make it to the national tournament. Something that I've been dreaming. Um, I have to have to have been here for at least 10 years as an assistant coach and I have coached um, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I just, I, I'll live the rest of my life remembering this experience, and I hope that the girls remember um, the life experiences we've had throughout this season, um, and just really treasure the season we had, because not many teams get the season that we have together. Um, I also have to say that we had an incredible amount of support from everybody from FM, um, I have to recognize, um, you know, Kevin Jones for the amount of work that he's put into the volleyball program this year and all of the support, having him with us at regionals was just, it's, it's just an incredible honor to be able to have the support of your athletic director at regionals running along the leisure stands, just as nervous and as um, excited for us to be able to win um, and pull that out and just, you could see how stressed he was as, you know, as much as our, our, our coaches were um, to have the the support of the the soccer team this year and last year. Um, but this year um, it's just phenomenal, and I don't know that I can ever remember the amount of support that I think that our team also provided to the soccer team, um, as well as just having you know just support in the the love and the, the, the cheering and the excitement from the crowd, it just, it really helps, but it also, I think it just really creates a lifetime of memories for everybody. Um, and I gotta thank Meg for the amount of, you know, just the support that she offers us, the, the pictures, it, she makes she makes y'all look good, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, especially if she gets my eyes open. Um, and then, you know, last but not least, I gotta thank Dave for, the commitment that he showed our FM volleyball team this year. He put up a lot. <laughs> we'll put it that way, right? Um, yeah, and he he pretty much let us do whatever we wanted as far as who was picking what music and how loud you were playing it. Um, but really, it meant the world. You know, um, I don't know that many schools would have the support from everybody from, from the college to, you know, from admissions to the president to um, your athletic director and just your other teams in the school. I don't know that everybody has that same level of support and I know that I appreciated that this year. Thank you.
It's a good question. No. Uh, no. That's just in there. Thank you guys. I'll give two brief, two brief things that everybody knows about, but since we're in public use. So I have two two additional items that I'll I'll make as part of my report. Um, one is that, as you know, we uh, we recently closed on the sale of student housing uh, a couple of weeks ago. So that the FCA is now um, no longer the owner of housing; that is that is owned by a private uh, enterprise. Uh, we're still working through the process with the USDA to close out the the obligation, the loan obligation. But they did sign their their satisfaction of mortgage paperwork and, and transferred the property. So um, that chapter has closed and, and we're moving on. Uh, and then the second is just to follow up on the water main break. You know, the uh, obviously we've been now a week or so with with without water spurting out of the ground and uh, the, the repairs have been made. We have some temporary repairs on the pavement just because uh, we, we recognize the, that the temperatures were going to be plummeting and, uh, and we begin to spread salt and sand and there's no way that the concrete was gonna cure in time. So the insurance company did agree with our approach to do just temporary asphalt patches until the warm weather comes in the spring. And um, so our, our contractor that we worked with Newkirk and um, our director of facilities wanted me to make sure that they made a point of acknowledging the, the rapid response that Newkirk excavation had, uh, they, they dropped whatever they were doing and, and came right out and spent three days on campus uh, addressing uh, water leaks as they began to appear uh, that we didn't know were there. And uh, they, they got the repairs done as quickly as they possibly could do and, and have followed up um, to monitor those repairs and also to get the temporary uh, work done. Um, so we do want to acknowledge the, the fine work and, and the excellent response that we got from Newkirk. And, uh, and they will be uh, coming back in the spring to do the, the permanent concrete repairs. Uh, and as I said, the insurance company uh, agreed with that approach. And, um, and so hopefully, you know, despite the, the loss of time and the, the inconvenience of all of that, you know, our, our insurance should cover that. Um, I'm sure we'll see it in our premiums next year, but that's why I guess you have insurance. So that is all that I prepared for this evening, but I'm happy to answer any questions about those items or, or anything else. Hearing none, I'll remind everyone that the College Senate report is in your packets, and I will call on student trustees for this. Madam Chair, uh, so today we will be just kind of touching upon some of the things that we have been discussing as, as we do now uh, due to that water main break. We had a bit of an alteration in the scheduling for some of our meetings uh, for the month of November. So uh, in terms of the student senate meeting, we were, um, we kind of had like a last minute get together um, in which a lot of our officers and, mem and situate members of the um, organization was not able to attend. I was able to get some uh, hearsay information from one of the members that was able to make it that day. I was not able to make it because it was a bit of a last minute scheduling change. But uh, I will give you a brief overview of what we had from the student senate meeting. It was because of the, the low participation due to the last minute uh, cancellations. Uh, it, was a, it was a shorter brief for meeting, but it was mostly just an overview to begin with. So um, uh, not much new business was covered, as I've stated before. Uh, after this month, we were beginning to transition with our new activities representative, Leanne Pratt, into the spring semester with new elected officers replace our December graduates. Uh, as I had said in the previous meeting, uh, we will be having multiple officers that have served us for uh, many of them for two years. And yes, I say we'll be graduating in December early. So we already have the positions filled and then we're going to be going through that transition through the next meeting. And also we're going to be working forward with uh, Leanne Pratt, who is our new uh, activities director moving forward with that transition. 
Additionally, um, as I had spoken in the last meeting, this was going to be the meeting to talk about financial rollouts for all the clubs and organizations um, for the students on the campus. That was also done during this, and each our club representative, including myself, was given financial information regarding the rollout, um, the rollout of finances. Uh, for academics, we'll do a brief overview. As uh, most, of, uh, most of us all know, especially myself and my fellow students, this is starting to, we're getting into the crunch time of fall semester. A lot of, a lot of uh, nerves are on the line, a lot of um, studying, a lot of people are starting to crowd in and get some tutoring in. So uh, I'm starting to wind down the fall semester. Uh, early admission students are continuing to fill the common areas and libraries. So that's, that's a huge plus. I see a lot of them all the time. And continuation from the uh, last meeting, nothing but good things to hear. So this is, it's been a great thing to see so much uh, positive precipitation from our younger students. Uh, there has been a noticeable increase in participation in the uh, free-for-all drop-in study reviews with the STEM review program and uh, our teachers who uh, uh, delegate their, uh, their time to do that for the students. So that is uh, a huge advantage. A lot of the students have been uh, taking advantage of more noticeably as we've been getting into the closer uh, the closer end towards the, uh, the end of the semester. Um, and uh, students who uh, were participating in the drop-in tutoring sessions, I was able to kind of get alongside some of them and ask them if it's been helping them. And a lot of them said that they've had a lot of, uh, a lot of them said they have a lot of positive things to say about it. And a lot of people have had a good reciprocation as well in terms of marks going up and also better results in the classroom, which is what we're all here for. So that's really good to hear. Um, on the other side, uh, a little bit more about clubs. So we still are in, um, a lot of us are still in the planning stages. Uh, some clubs are starting to take initiative and do some, some on-campus events. Uh, my club that I am uh, the head of, the Student Nurse Association, uh, has begun an initiative to start um, our, our annual uh, fall food drive for the uh, Raiders Relief Food Pantry. That started a few days ago, and we have posted flyers and boxes around the campus to notify the, the student body of, about this um, procedure that we're going to be taking through. And I also have been in contact with Robin Town. I sent out a template email and also a picture of the flyer, and we're going to do a mass email, most likely at the start of next week, to send out to the student body to get more awareness for that. And um, club censuses, so I've talked to a multitude of the club leaders. They have told me that most, um, most of the amounts uh, in terms of our club census is on the lower side this year. This is um, this is uh, somewhat anticipated because ever since we hit that that bit of that roadblock of COVID, a lot of uh, participation in in-person um, activities has gone down a little bit. So this was something that we anticipated. So we're hoping to get a little more interest in the upcoming spring semester, and we'll most likely also have more incoming students as well. So that kind of uh, touches upon the, um, the clubs and the uh, student sense and also the academics portion. Uh, this was mo mostly a, a brief, um, a brief uh, overview of the things that we had going on. And then uh, touching upon the athletics, uh, that was an awesome thing that we were able to do for the volleyball and soccer team as I was uh, discussing with my fellow trustees before we had started this meeting. Uh, I wanted to touch upon the volleyball and soccer team alike, and uh, it's really awesome to see um, our small little school and a conference in a region full of these big schools coming out and basically making a team out of the athletes with some with, with uh, specifications for getting all of these awards. What's so cool to me is I were able to make a small school of um, a little over maybe a thousand people when some schools are having classes that are bigger than like five, six classes at our school be able to come together and make multiple athletic teams and be able to make a full roster of just people that got special awards. That that was honestly really cool to see. And also our coaches, which have been, well, all of them have been very, very supportive, of, especially personally speaking during my time as um, an athletic student here. So that was a really awesome thing that the board did. And I really appreciate that as a student representative for um, our athletic teams. And then uh, moving forward, just for the general overview for uh, athletics, the census is up um, for all of our teams. All of our teams uh, for the, uh, the winter have more people on the roster, are on the active roster going into the winter season. Uh, many of the roster sizes have actually doubled, especially um, personally speaking on the bowling team. I'm uh, the captain of the bowling team as I was last year. And last year we had five bowlers throughout the year. And we're starting this one with 10. So uh, really, we're, we're looking really, really good to start uh, the winter season. Hopefully, we're able to uh, retain uh, all of the interest. Uh, but things look really good on the athletic department. So moving forward, uh, my plan is to just to try to 
find different ways to see if I can just get the word out about the clubs and the special organizations that are offered on campus to see if we can get a little more interest um, from that perspective. But in terms of that, it's more of a brief uh, report that I have today, but I am more than welcome to answer any questions anybody has for me. Thank you. We'll move on to the foundation report with Trustee Tazi Bagar. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm going to start uh, my uh, report with uh, the 15th Annual Distinguished Alumni Dinner uh, and 2nd uh, Annual Clock um, uh, Tower Award, uh, which uh, took place at Holiday Inn on uh, November 3rd. And we, we had a wonderful crowd, and Holiday Inn did a fantastic job. So, um, Mrs. Dante and uh, Mrs. Bosley. And um, so far, we, um, you know, up to that day, uh, we had 41 um, uh, recipient award uh, um, for, uh, for the alumni. And that night, we had two alumni, which we um, honored. And that was uh, uh, Joel Tian uh, Amis and the other one, our dear friend, uh, Mr. Very uh, Green Pitt. And uh, we had a wonderful time, and uh, the, the second annual award, Tower Award, went to Dr. Rao, or Mrs. Rao, and the family. And oh, I have to mention something very important. Our student, uh, our student uh, trustee, Evan, opened the night and he did a fantastic job. The second thing is a uh, scholarship, uh, which is um, for uh, $191,000. Uh, this is for this academic year. And the name of the uh, recipient, along with the donors, it is in the booklet uh, that they gave away when, at, at that night. And what I think is um, getting ready to be made, and um, it's going to be the, uh, the, toward the end of this month. And uh, Foundation would like to both, both or meaning Foundation Board as well as Trustee uh, for hundred percent support. It doesn't matter how much, but as long as we have. 100% support, uh, we appreciate that. Oh, um, by the way, for this uh, annual appeal, foundation uh, bring it up to the faculty and the staff, and they <laughs> offer it that they can automatically de deduct it from their uh, salary and some of them, they already signed up for it. Foundation uh, starting significant fundraising, uh, which is uh, for the building of the athletic field. And this athletic field is going to be used. Uh, it has multiple purpose. And it's very good. The appraisal um, approximately cost is five million dollar. From this five million dollar uh, foundation, need to raise two point five million. And uh, at the dinner um, foundation, uh, the award dinner. Uh, Mrs. Lanty displayed the, um, the plan uh, on the easel for people to watch for the, for the field. And uh, foundation, they're going to uh, give the opportunity, naming opportunity, and they, they are going to bring it to the board of trustee uh, for voting on it. Um, and this is because of. Uh, uh, 
policy 1790. The gallery uh, will be open from uh, December 16th until January 13th. And the an artist name is Brianna um, Wilson, and she's from Shorts. <clears throat> FM uh, Foundation uh, audit is completed, and they are going to bring it to executive <clears throat> committee. Um, and then uh, they are going to bring it to the whole board for January 6th. Golf tournament for 2023 uh, is gonna be at uh, Fox Run on May 25th. And please mark your calendar. And um, last but not least, foundation will, will be uh, participating in Giving Tuesday. Uh, November 29th. It will be on Instagram, <coughs> excuse me, on Facebook, and uh, connect to the website for foundation. <coughs> I don't know. No, I don't think so. Uh, but with that, I conclude my report. If there's no question, you don't have any addition to it. The only comment is that we have to treat teams that we should treat fields for yes. display. This is going to benefit us because uh, these days all the community colleges are competing uh, and uh, students are looking for what is extra. Um, that's how we have a beautiful campus, and this is uh, it's going to be add to it. And I think Mrs. Lanty, Mrs. Lanty, really raised to two million five. No, no problem for me. Yes, no problem for her. Yeah, that's I conclude my report, Madam Chair. Thank you. We'll move on to finance with Trustee Watson. Thank you. The expense grants are included in your packet again this month. The expense summary budget versus actual for the period of 9 1 22 to 8 31 23, which is 17% of our fiscal year. Today, actual expenses and encumbrances are 15% of budget. The expense detail by department provides by department a detailed comparison of our expenses and encumbrances of budget for the fiscal period, which is 17% of our fiscal year. Finance statement for the period of 9 1 22 to 9 30 22, which is 8% of our fiscal year. The revenue includes billing activities for 9 30 22 for the fall 22 semester. This represents 28.3% of our tuition budget. All expenses incurred represent one month or 7.2% of the budget. The budget transfer report summarizes budget transfers completed for the month, and the contract report summarizes the contract signed during October 2022. There were no grants to report this month. There is one board motion to approve uh, budget transfer. The Board of Trustees approves all budget transfers between budgetary departments that exceed $5,000 and all transfers that affect full time salary accounts. This budget transfer for 2022 23 pertains to full time salaries. These funds are being reallocated to better align this with staffing in the respective department. The President recommends that the Board of Trustees approve the 2022 23 budget transfer listed on the attached page. That's a transfer between student activities and advising for $69,422. Would you sponsor that motion? Absolutely. Second, uh, Trustee Gardella. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Building and grounds with Trustee Landry. Thank you, Madam Chair. As you know, the president has always stole my thunder, but uh, I uh, I would like to make a comment on this. First, um, we suffered a 
Thank you. Move on to academic affairs with Trustee Gardella. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, in the spirit of this Thanksgiving season, I'd like to begin. Thank you. Um, by thanking President Robin Miller, President Putnam, Dr. Snyder, Robin Town, Robin DeVito, and Larry Duffrey for their support and assistance in launching the Elizabeth Cady Stanton Hopetown Association's pre and post election project through a Stanton survey email to all students and staff. And we certainly hope that all staff here um, will answer that survey as well and participate. Uh, we were interested as an association in the di diversity component of FMCC because our association also wants to encourage diversity among um, members and among the community members as well. Um, and to see how that diversity might have played out in the results of the students and the staff in terms of their comments um, on the election issues that they were concerned about and that brought them to the polls. We certainly know that nationwide students turn out full force, and that was very, very encouraging. As I'm sure Evan will agree, and all of us here will agree. Uh, women turned out, so many of the groups that were uh, expected to come out in force and across the country voting is very strong, particularly in a mid year election. So we encourage all of you to do that. Um, we had a print email to all students in September, giving them some information they might consider in order to cast votes. And then we had the survey just go out this week and there will be a reminder. So ever do whatever you can to remind people to take that survey, please. Uh, we're really pleased with this town and gown opportunity as we always are. Uh, the Stanton Association has had a, an excellent rapport with many groups on campus and much support in, uh, in making the town and gown work. So thank you all. Um, since it is a season for thanks, I'd like to highlight some thanks in the academic report that um, Provost has prepared for us. And that is uh, a shout out and thanks for Christy Davis, who's the External Partnership and Applied Learning Director. Um, there was a community fair uh, on the 19th of October, 14 employers across the interdisciplinary areas of the college uh, were attend in attendance to offer internship opportunities for which we are very thankful. And that's increased significantly um, over the years. And we're thankful also for the SUNY grant that created the C4 initiative, FMCC, Adirondack, Schenectady, and Columbia Green are now called the Canon Business Education Hub. The FM writing program through, is writing its program through individual studies uh, for cultivation, lab assurance, and dispensary management. Uh, last night, FM hosted an info night focused on the lab assurance technician and dispensary management careers. And uh, a thanks and a shout out to the Veterans Hemp Market in Broad Alden, which has been a successful site for hands-on experience in lab uh, tech and store management. And thanks for, to Charlene Dimes for her leadership in this area. Thanks also to Andrea Scribner's work in securing New York articulation agreements with Capital Region OCs for the LPN program. Students accepted here of, can earn seven credits for Nursing 105. Capital Region students at FM will be granted six credits for the successful completion for Med 183. And then um, our RN to the, uh, the DSN articulation for seamless transition to Stony Brook. And the transfer fair here on 10-17 uh, brought in 30 SUNY and four <coughs> private universities to talk about 
uh, successful transitions to their places. So, so thanks to Andrea and to the development and to all that helped put that together because that's a major undertaking. Um, you're going to be seeing and hearing more about the gen ed requirements that are changing and all of the FM faculty will be in all divisions will be involved in that. And, um, Vice President Putman will be alerting us about that as it moves along. The Social Science Department is uh, ready for program review for the six-year action plan. Um, John Armstrong, Eric Gower, and Julie Lynn are involved in their areas for that review. Um, we thank St. Mary's HR and nursing staff for the recruitment event on October 17th, providing lunch as well. We're thankful to the work of two adjuncts at FM, Ron Sutler, the HVAC instructor who is adding two curriculum options for that program. One is the purchase and installing a new heat pump, uh, thanks to the Perkins grant, and also administering. He's gonna administer the EPA 608 exam. It's no cost to students, thanks to a newly secured emergency, emerging, excuse me, tax student grant. We welcome Kelly Shannon, recently retired in Schenectady, uh, school district art teacher. She will be teaching in the spring fine arts courses in 3D design and drawing the upcoming spring semester. Thanks to Dan Fogarty, Associate Dean of Academic and Student Affairs for his current work and rebranding process for the website. Also the new logo work. And, um, and uh, on page seven of the Academic Affairs Reports, you can uh, utilize it two links. One is to Greg's Welcome. Uh, to FMCC, and the other is to the founder, um, excuse me, the Global Foundries Partnership Vimeo, which is on, and both of these obviously are attempts to get the news out about who we are, what we are, and um, and all of that is, is, you know, part of our marketing attempts. Uh, the alumni spotlight of Dan Fogarty has really taken a hold with that social media so that current students and faculty administration keep up with where our students are now. And so we're gonna give a shout out to Sonali Kumar, criminal justice uh, major, whose new job is at Nike as a project administrator. To Haley Johnson Martin, uh, in the teacher assistance program, working in an area school now, and who plans to pursue her bachelor's in the spring. And the foundation certainly has been very active in supporting um, and, and highlighting our alum as well. To Dan and Charlene Divas for leadership presentations of the 2022 Cannabis Expo in October. And in the, to um, Bill Winsman, FM Foundation Chair, for providing a guest lecture in Larry Zuckerman's Business 263. It's 2632, The Fundamentals of Investment. I understand he does that for us routinely. To the <laughs> Business Department's Money, Spam, Money Smart Grant, Larry Zuckerman, Charlene Divas, and Mark Swain train new financial coaches for the nine mo module non-credit curriculum for money smart non-credit course for students and it's um, important to note that many instructors here across several disciplines have volunteered to coach in that program we'd like to welcome brian malcolm to the red tech team as a full-time instructor um, he has an interesting background in infectious diseases and global, global health policy and he taught ESL in Korea. He sounds exactly like the kind of fellow that both Carlin and, and Colin will uh, put to, to very good use. And finally, thanks to Carolyn Bates friends at Slate River Farms for donating 85 pounds of grass-fed beef. Um, and also on in the report of the uh, Rad Tech on page nine, there's an in interesting summary of the credentialing accomplishments and the employment rates um, for the Red Tech program. So we have many people throughout the campus all over to thank. Um, and indeed, we are thankful and I'm thankful to work with this wonderful group of trustees and Diane Boslitz, who has the job of herding hats. Okay, so thank you very much and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Moving on to Student Affairs with Trustee Salad. Thank you, Madam Chair. I also want to thank again Jackie for your concise report. Very, very nice. For fall 2022, FM has enrolled 1,830 students. This represents 1,108 full time equivalent students. Um, the highlights of uh, the student affairs, uh, student engagement at the Commons. The Commons Spirit Week was held October 31st through November 4th. 
The activities involve team days, including Wicked Raider Wednesday, where students, faculty, and staff wore FMCC college gear and posted selfies to the new FMCC student involvement Facebook group. Leanne Pratt, coordinator for student involvement, is actively engaged in uh, new social media opportunities to promote campus events. This helps to inform students and the broader community of what is happening on campus. The Commons also held an open house, uh, official open house on October 31st, 2022, to promote the space as supporting academic success and to foster a sense of community. I also want to say uh, November 15th was the Health Professions Open House, the 16th was STEM Open House, and the 17th uh, was business. Today was Business and Liberal Arts Open House, and I can imagine how wonderful they were. Thank you. Um, the newly developed area is being utilized by more students in comparison to last year. The TRIO EOP study area had 576 visits by students in the month of October. This is 223 more visits by students over this time last year. The Commons is truly supporting strategic goal number two, the equitable student experience, connecting and fostering meaningful relationships to build a sense of belonging for all students. And in a sensory and relaxing room, uh, it, it's completed. And thanks in large part to assistance from Beth Carpenter and Karen Schaefer, who offered their creative skills. The sensory room provides a calming refuge for students and others in the campus community who have sensory special needs to decompress and regain focus. In addition to the bubble wall, crash pad, aromatherapy, and stress balls, that it previously held, it is now boasting a relaxing picture of mountains, a yoga pad, upright swivel seating, and other amenities. Take, take advantage of it. A, a new seasonal affective disorder therapy lamp has also been installed. Students began using the room October 26th. Uh, the new website uh, progresses. Um, it's coming together nicely, highlighting um, themes including but are not limited to the FMCC difference, uh, academic program and individual studies offerings, college stats, faculty bios, admissions, financial aid, student accounts and student experience sections. Consultant Rob Palmieri helped coordinate the website committee um, held on October 6th and tasked members with conducting an extensive review of their de department's current website pages and to provide specific recommendations of the content to carry over to the new website. The website committee included the following people and includes the following people, Laura Laporte, Becky Kozakria, Arlene Spencer, Jared Dimadistris, uh, Robin Town, Dan Fogarty, and Dan Town. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to diversity, equity, and inclusion with Mr. Bonnie Woodhouse. What's that? All right. Well, thank you. I thought that was the mic. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to skip down a little bit and uh, play a bit on here. So I um, yeah. think this book is sustainable with the book. It's right. um, so, uh, right. And they're integrating diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so that's, that's a real positive piece. I think this has to be, this has to be, so this has to be driven by the students primarily. Um, the human rights class has gotten really interesting. I've learned quite a bit in there. And we have a new term, LGBTQIA++. And the importance of the A on that is that's an ally. So there's more trainings going on in some areas of people who are allies to supporting diversity. And that makes me feel a little bit better because I've talked about my race, gender, age. You know, now I'm saying an ally. It's a little bit better, which I always was that one. So that is interest because it's inclusive of others. And that is so important. Now, a parallel thought from that class came up with a woman who was referred to as African American. She said, that's an incorrect term because it's not just from Africa, they're separate countries. So we get into how prejudice works to lump in people into particular groups. I think this was really crucial. And you saw that with the hate crimes towards Asians. Um, one of the discussions that came out of that is well, there's a whole lot of different people who are Asians. So 
the more we have this discussion, I think the more important uh, it is that we start to sort of differentiate between people and uh, also find some common ground with that. We also got into an issue about the or talk about the golden rule of religious and secular ethics uh, as a, as one of the foundations to diversity and equity and inclusion. Sometimes these uh, perspectives start to pull people apart. Well, let's find the common ground instead. If you want to read somebody interesting, take a look at Karen Armstrong in her chart of compassion. Uh, a very interesting statement um, on religion to denigrate others. And I know for some of this is a difficult topic, but these are the things that we do need to talk about um, in a civil matter. Consistent with that was uh, learning more about the actual human rights doctrine. Some of the documents are out there as a foundation to stand on. Um, so it's not just you're talking as a leading mark. Um, you're, this is actually a legal document that uh, a good part of the world is going on to. It's not a position of knowledge. So, and of course, turning that into emotional intelligence, the uh, text I've used a lot is Marshall Rosenberg's nonviolent communication. How do we talk to each other? How do we find common ground? They're not getting involved in um, too much going on there. One really exciting thing is uh, to the Supreme Court of the United Nations Day, and we spoke a bit about that. But their focus is to keep the inequality on the public planet. Now, it's exciting to me to just really be with the common planet, and that's going to broaden out something we've been doing all along in our national justice, which is being more present. Yeah, 
and what is the right path to go to hundred um, percent that they, they don't get offended. Just ask. Just ask how you want to party. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was introduced to my first person identified as they like four years ago. And um, it, something happened and I said, they, I it just didn't register. And I said, ah, okay. So it's 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 different. I right? think yeah. like anything else, it's, uh, and you just don't let the wiki to go to the price, price based thing, which is all new. And first it's going to be a little confusing. Don't practice you, you get used to it. You just have to understand that. These things are changed in gender roles, which bring you into a whole new cultural yeah. thing about how hard it is for people to accept this. Can you imagine if you ask somebody, how do you want me to call you? Six months later, you forget. You know, that's another uh, problem that but we all have to be open to change and Thank you so much. Like any other questions? Moving on to accreditation with Jackie Snyder. Thank you. I have a short report. Just wanted to share that we concluded the Self Study Institute on November 10th. Um, we now have all of the foundational elements to put our self study design together. Um, that will be due at the first part of the year in January. We'll be meeting with our Middle States uh, VP liaison, Dr. Cushman Hock, um, who also will be visiting our campus in the spring. So, more to come. Oh. Um, just wanted to give you a brief update on the conclusion of the self study institute. Happy to answer any questions. And when our liaison comes, they'll be meeting with the board as well. Mm -hmm. Jackie. They will, there will be, a, it'll be a full day with an agenda. Um, so he will go over the self-study process and talk about the strategic goals, how important those are to our campus and to the self-study process. So and it's done with all of our stakeholders. Thank you. And now we'll turn to personnel with Trustee Jesuits. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to thank Connie Grant for the report. Um, Jennifer has stolen my thunder on Brian Miguel Elfine, so I'll move on. Uh, we have another hire, Teresa Seabred, who starts October 27th. That's principal clerk in the finance office. She's an alumni at Fort Montgomery Community College and the Associates in Applied Science and Secretarial Studies. Teresa worked for 15 years as an account clerk at the Greater Amsterdam School District. Prior to that position, she was a medical office clerk for New Dimension in healthcare and assistant billing clerk for Jabco Tasher, MD. There's a vacancy search going on for a step C step director full time. It's grant funded, recruitment coordinator and communication specialist full time. Senior account clerk full time. Um, and that will conclude my report, Madam Chair, unless there's any questions. Thank you. So I know that Trustee Perry will be devastated to know that the policy committee has something to report and she was unable to be here tonight. So in your packets, um, and, at your places. and I'm sorry, and at your places, there will be two items on the agenda for next month that. Um, we will have the opportunity to vote on. There is a now irrelevant policy requiring um, that first year students live in student housing, um, that first year, sorry, full time students who relocate to, the, to attend college. Since the, no college affiliated entity currently owns any college housing, there will be a motion to rescind that policy. And then there's also some proposed changes to the student use of drugs and alcohol, which really just appears to be cleaning up some grammatical and other language. There's nothing terribly substantive. So they're in your packets for review and they will be on the agendas for a vote next month. Um, at this time, does, do any trustees have any other business to come before the board? I do not identify any reason tonight that we would have to go into executive session, but we will be holding a mini retreat 
at the conclusion of the meeting for the purpose of uh, discussing collective bargaining. Okay. So with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Trustee Gardella, Trustee Salamak, any opposition? All in favor? Thank you, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>